Friendly Islands united into the Polynesian Kingdom in 1845, British protected in 1900, independent in 1970. Really monarchy in the South Pacific. Yes, they have athletes, boxers, weightlifters and of course a rugby sevens team. They're in Samoa's group actually along with South Africa and Uganda and you'll be able to see the start of that sevens tournament this evening when we get underway, your time that is, it's, uh, it's a few hours sleep hopefully for us in between. <laughs> it's their seventh games, one medal, a bronze from a boxer, Ai Wolfram, super heavyweight in 1994, that was in Victoria. British Columbia. And it was no fluke either because he won an Olympic silver two years later. Tuvalu! Nine low-lying atolls in the southwest Pacific. 4,500 kilometers from Melbourne if you'd like to know. Alan Rastuari. A weightlifter, a bit beg your pardon, he's a table tennis player, he's carrying their flag today. And very interesting, a major source of income for Tuvalu is derived from the licensing of its .tv internet domain. It nets them about three million pounds a year. Vanuatu follow. Their national anthem is yummy, yummy, yummy. But it means we, we, we. We what, I'm afraid I can't tell you. <laughs> And in their midst, the youngest ever competitor at the Commonwealth Games, it's not that lady, she is 12-year-old table tennis player, Joshua Shing. We will take the bow for Vanuatu, making history in the process. And now finally, we're waiting for... Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the last of our teams into the stadium tonight. The proud hosts of the 18th Commonwealth Games, Australia. So once again, advance Australia fair. That is an anthem I think we will all know the words to by the end of these games. Especially in the pool with the ladies. Prime Minister John Howard applauding vigorously. Well, it's Jane Saddle who carries their flag, a race walker, first ever race walker to carry a flag for any nation at the Commonwealth Games. And very nice for her because she was the lady who was pulled out 200 metres from the stadium in Sydney when she thought she was going to win the 20 kilometre walk. Well, you mentioned how strong this huge team will be in the pool. The women particularly, there's even talk of 17 goals for the girls alone. And you won't get terribly long odds on Libby Lenton claiming seven of those. The 21-year-old from Brisbane broke the world record for the 100 metres at the Aussie Trials earlier this year. And she's one of a triumvirate of female freestylers who could clean up in Melbourne. Watch out for Judy Henry and Alice Mills in the mix as well. Meanwhile on the track, Australia's in a right lather about the chances of Craig Mottram. No athletes won the 1500 metres 5000 double at the Commonwealth Games. And the local lad's got a good chance of making history here. He'll walk from his home to the MCG, about 200 metres away. And in Melbourne, it's netball, which is the honour of closing out the games. That's the last goal to be won, and it's a sure bet that Australia will play New Zealand in another Trans-Tasman showdown. The Australians have pipped the Silver Ferns by a single goal in each of the last two events. And for me, it's going to be one of the highlights of these games. And just behind them, I think it's fair to say it's likely to be uh, England against Jamaica. Indeed. For the bronze. For the bronze, yes. Yeah. Major sporting nation, Australia. And this, the people of Melbourne say, is the sporting capital of the country. Well, it's Australia's largest team ever at the Commonwealth Games, 431 of them.
target 2006 as Australia aiming for 208 medals. That's one more than they claimed in Manchester. They'd like 88 gold medals. It's quite a fault. Well, they've got 1,691 at the moment. It's the most successful nation ever in Commonwealth Games history. What an auditorium that looks. Resplendent in their green and gold blazers. here to applaud them. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the finest athletes of the Commonwealth. The talented sportsmen and women from 71 nations and territories who've worked so hard in order to compete over the next 11 days. Please welcome them all to Melbourne one more time. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the Queen's Baton is about to leave the river. And the journey that began a year and 186,000 kilometres ago is almost over. Melbourne's David Neitz presents the Queen's Baton to Australian football legend Ron Barassi. to meet Ron Barassi at the end of his walk on water, Olympic gold medalist and one of the greatest milers of all time, Herb Elliott. 1500 metre champion of uh, 1960, broke the four minute mile after only three years of co competition. He can go up those steps six at a time. When he retired, he'd accrued an amazing 44 consecutive victories in world-class competition. And he won the MBE for an outstanding service to Australian athletics. Ah! Oh, there you are, you see. He can now say he walks on water. that I was wondering why he aged so much. This is actually Ron Barassi. The public address announcer led us into error. Long time since we've seen Herb Elliott, but you're going to see him in a minute. Ron Barassi of the Melbourne Football Club and then a coach later of the Carlton Football Club. And uh, he had some achievement as a coach. He once managed to turn a score round of being 44 points down at half time. Eventually does it. One of the more familiar, slightly gaunt features of her Elliot. He can be clearly remember Yes, of course he can. City boy. Ladies and gentlemen, the Baton calls nearer. Two great champions of Australian sports, Ron Barassi and Herb Elliott. 